Hello, my name is Gerard Williams. I'm the Senior Vice President at Qualcomm. I oversee uh, CPU engineering development, and I am excited to uh, be with you here today at Snapdragon Summit 2023. So hi everyone, you join me at a very exciting time. I'm here at Snapdragon Summit 2023, and you know that every year at this event, they announce new chips. This year is very special because we have the new compute chip we've all been waiting for. And I'm joined by this guy. He's in charge of actually designing the thing, and he knows a little bit about high performance. So I'd like to welcome Gerard Williams to the channel. Good to have you. Oh, it's good to be here, Ian. Very good to be here. So I know some of you have heard about Gerard before, some of you probably haven't. Um, I want Gerard to explain in his own words why he is the lead architect for this new product and what in his history screams high performance. Mm. Well, very good question, Ian. Um, and I'll try to keep this brief because it's a it's a 30 year journey that I've taken, but um, kind of for the audience and for you, um, my background actually, it does go back 30 years in the industry. I started out very low level simple design uh, working at, with design teams i uh, I basically had an opportunity uh, to work on a, kind of my first CPU design. Um, it happened to be a very simple in order design, which honestly, given where I'm at today, it feels like one of those things you can design over a weekend um, but um, through those thirty thirty years of of industry experience, I basically built in order designs, out of order designs, even microcontrollers, which are very small designs. Um, and I would say recently I've, I've started uh, delving into very aggressive out of order designs. Um, and um, kind of the critical thing, which a lot of people find intrigue in, is how in the world do you take this aggressive out of order design and make it sip power from a mm. battery? Um, and that actually, in that 30 years, that was learned as well. Kind of my foundation in the beginning was developing these in-order designs, but making them literally consume microwatts and milliwatts. I have been able to actually take that mindset and carry it forward through the, through the years um, and keep that as a practice in these very aggressive out-of-order designs. It's it feels like you're violating <laughs> physics. <laughs> That's what I get told. Yeah. How in the world you're violating yeah. physics? Um, turns out, no, it, it's, it's just a complex problem of bringing those two things together. So you can't break physics, but you can bend it. Oh, I can bend it, and I <laughs> bend it in every way that I can. <laughs> so, so if you were to estimate the number of CPUs sold that you've had a hand in, Ooh. are we talking tens of millions, billions? No, it's multiple billions, multiple. Um, it's actually kind of interesting because if you look at all the live devices that mm -hmm. are out there right now, I could probably say, um, in, especially in the last 20, 25 years, um, it's got to easily cross 10 plus billion <laughs> SOCs that I've, I've, I've had a, my fingerprints in yeah. in some way. It's, 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 uh, you got to have a plaque on your wall that says I ship 10 billion <laughs> yeah. SOCs yeah. just to show off. Yeah. Um, so, so, so we're here at Snapdragon Summit and I've already said, you know, we're talking all about compute. This mm. event is at least 80% of compute. And I know the smartphone team will be like, no, we're, we're still here. Um, <laughs> smartphone stuff is still fun, but I've got Gerard in to speak about compute. We're talking about this new family, Snapdragon X Elite. Mm. Orion, several years in the making, Cristiano's, you know, shot across the bow at the mm -hmm. rest of the industry. Um, take us through what go take us through what the idea was when you started thinking about this chip. Yeah, so we joined Qualcomm, uh, myself in particular, and the engineering team that kind of came with me. We we've been here three years now. Actually, it's a little over three years. Um, the, uh, the journey for this chip really started almost instantly when we walked in the door. Mm. Um, it, uh, we, we, we had kind of a framework for the CPU. There was, it was, it was well underway. Um, but, um, 
this this particular compute chip really started on that day. And we have been working, I would say, feverishly on kind of the architectural design, what it needs to look like, how big it needs to be, how many memory channels we need to put in it, mm -hmm. um, core count, um, all aspects that started really years ago. Um, and just recently, uh, we finally got silicon and we were playing with it. And now, as we're speaking here, <laughs> it's here to play with for a lot, for real. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, I remember some of those early simulation numbers you guys were publishing and mm. it's like, you can do that? <laughs> and you're here to say, yes, you the can. The answer is yes, you <laughs> can. Yes, you can. It's, uh, it was fun because, um, I mean, we, we've talked a little bit about this kind of on and off, but it's, um... The performance when we sat down ages ago, uh, it feels like ages now. I mean, it's literally three years, but it feels like ages ago. Um, we studied it, kind of drew up a blueprint for the CPU. We kind of knew where we wanted to take it. Um, and then as the compute platform developed, um, we started to see uh, what it would look like in emulation framework. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, well, actually, it's, the numbers are holding. It looks very good. Um, and then we got silicon back. And we actually got to play with the silicon. And that's when, and Cristiano said this on stage live, he yep. goes, it exceeded every expectation that we had. And it's true. It did. I mean, across the board, everything that we looked at, everything we measured was above what we were predicting. Um, it's a nice place to be in. <laughs> it's a very nice place to be in. So given the time cycles for chips like these, right, you... <laughs> Three years ago, machine learning was but a glint in our eyes, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, GBT-1 was kind yeah. of about, um, and you have to kind of predict what the market is going to be mm -hmm. several years in advance, what the process node technology is going to look mm -hmm. like in advance. Can you give us a hint of you know, how you go about thinking what to put in a design that early on um, and, and just how much you have to know about being competitive at this time mm. yeah it's it's um there's there's no i would say fixed recipe yeah because I, I know people would like to understand a fixed recipe there's just not one so really what you end up doing is you study who's in the space mm -hmm. what are the product categories that you're trying to go after um look at the history of i'll call it competitor a competitor b competitor mm -hmm. c how are they faring? How are the core counts kind of mutating over time or memory channels mutating or GPU or CP, or sorry, or um, NPU in this case? Yep. Um, and you study those um, and you'll build trend lines. You'll, you'll, you'll just see, all right, it, it looks like this guy's going here. And then what you basically spend a lot of time doing is looking at what's being spoken in the market. Mm -hmm. There's leaks everywhere by anybody and everybody. And, and you just go, you go study all these aspects. Some things are true, some things are not. And you have to balance them off against what you think the team can accomplish in the time frame. Yeah. Um, and it's that balance that's pretty tricky. And yes, you hit on it. It's not a simple thing to do. And it's um, the team I've assembled, it, we've gotten pretty good at, I'll call it guesstimating. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. guesstimating where that's going to be and we we kind of we, we set a goal and then we march towards it and and we check to see if the design can uh, along the way we'll check it and see if it can do that yeah so uh, one thing i like to ask the chip designers is so you know where the low-hanging fruit is now that you mm -hmm. have silicon yeah ready for you know whatever the roadmap is going to look like uh, it, so that low, I, I, that, I know the question you're asking so it's um a, a, a different way to rephrase what, what you're saying is when you have a design now in hand that you mm -hmm. can play, measure, test, feel, touch, so yep. to speak, um, where do you see deficiencies in the yep. design? Um, are there power deficiencies? Are there performance deficiencies? Can you make it smaller? Mm -hmm. What can you add? Um, the answer is yes. We have looked at that quite a lot. Um, and that actually, that, that list of things that you kind of tease out of the design um, that's kind of the starting list mm -hmm. that goes into next generation, yep. really. Um, you'll do a lot of oh, papers. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll go study. I mean, you've got a PhD. <laughs> we study a lot of... Yep. We, I study everything from dissertation to papers to historical designs. 
Um, I, I study the competition. Yep. I do. Um, and you take all of that information and you assemble it with your current generation that you have silicon for. And that becomes kind of the seed for yes. next gen. It's, I know Cristiano was talking about this being a multi-generational journey mm -hmm. and, and you're for the ride. You're, yeah, you're yeah, in for yeah the ride. It's, it is. It is. It's a multi-generational. Um, I'm actually super proud that we got to where we are. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I'd like to wave the flag that say, yes, we actually got to the what I call number one position in terms of single threat performance. Mm -hmm. It was a huge ambition to try to pull that off. Um, to do it on the first generation, that's the... <laughs> That's like the icing on the cake. That's what you look um, for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. I can tell everybody that. It doesn't happen very often. And um, the goal is to just continue the momentum. Mm -hmm. Don't let off the gas. So so for those of you who haven't seen the news, what exactly have you got? Well, the Snapdragon X Elite, codename Orion. Yes. What is Orion? So Orion is the name for the CPU. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the, it's the official name for the CPU inside and outside of Qualcomm. Um, it, um, that CPU is actually a, um, uh, it, it, it's basically going to enable Qualcomm to, as we see right now in the launch of the compute space, it's going to open doors into other markets. Um, it'll open potentially doors into, as Cristiano alluded to in his keynote mobile, mm -hmm. Um, it will open doors into auto, um, XR, other spaces. It has the potential to do that. And so the Snapdragon X Elite, this, this first generation, mm -hmm. 12 cores, 4.3 gigahertz, which is some of the fastest ARM cores mm -hmm. ever, ever built in this space. High performance graphics, high performance NPU. Mm -hmm. um, who is this targeting? This, this is basically targeting um, the PC industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's targeting basically the, the user that goes out and, and, and looks to buy a laptop for everyday use. Mm -hmm. um, portable designs, lightweight designs, battery operated designs. It could be anything from um, what, we, what I would call thin and light, fanless style designs, very lightweight. It has the the, the SOC, um, the Snapdragon X Elite SOC, has the potential to go fanless. Or it has uh, such a large dynamic range in all of its IP and the SOC to take you all the way up into even fanned laptop, fanned enclosures. So one chip for the whole range. One chip. Well, one chip, different SKUs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that sounds, that sounds yes. good. Um, so... One of the elements of this industry, and Qualcomm's been, you know, hammering this home to us as as well as many others, is this need for a CPU design where you have this high performance version and then an efficiency version. Mm -hmm. ARM typically calls it Big Little. Other people have different names for this. However, this chip has twelve performance cores. No efficiency cores, yeah. or are you saying twelve efficiency cores because it's ah. the same thing? In, in this particular case, it's actually the same thing. Right. Um, the cores, and, and this goes back to the beginning when I talked, you asked me the question about my history a little bit. Mm. So the core was designed with efficiency as mm -hmm. kind of, I'll call it, that actually is the target. Yep. The absolute power, the absolute performance is kind of a side effect for me of the efficiency. We, we go for that. Yep. Um, so as a result, um, the focus was actually to build a one core that could span that that uh, that dynamic range yeah. low power high performance and if need be it can go into a very low power state mm -hmm. operate at low frequency and be ultra efficient as well so uh, i mentioned we're you know a few months away from seeing this in devices that's usually a little bit earlier than when we see mm -hmm. other cpus in this space being launched you know for notebooks what's still left to do um Basically, it's in the process of developing a platform like this that you're going to launch into the ecosystem. There is, I'll call it fine tuning mm -hmm. on, on the SOC. There's still some tuning that needs to be done. There's still some software tuning and refinement, mm -hmm. getting all the drivers, everything ready in that SOC so that it's all packaged. And for the end user, it just runs. That's what you want. So we're, we're at that stage now of iterate, refine, yep. iterate, refine, and, and, and get it ready for consumption.
But you're confident this early on in the performance mm -hmm. that you've shoved some numbers in our face. It's that they wouldn't let me run my tests. <laughs> um, so I've, I've got some of their numbers, which will be published. Um, but the numbers look good for industry stand for the, for the ones that you show. Yeah, I, I yeah. still want to get my hands on. <laughs> Thing is, I actually know the guy who ran the tests for you. Mm. Uh, yeah, and um, I trust him. Yeah, but I still want to run my yeah. own. I, I, I like that guy. He's pretty, yeah. he's pretty good. Yeah. By the way, I, I won't mention him, but he he is a part of the CPU engineering team. Mm -hmm. He is. He is. Yeah. He's a good guy. Um, so, what should people expect out of their devices with this chip? Um, so we talked about performance today, but, but reality is for this device with GPU, with NPU and the use cases that we're looking at, you should expect a very solid operating experience. Um, you should expect very good battery life out of the part. Um, when you do want to push the envelope on the part, it has the potential to do that. So if you want to do some aggressive gaming on the machine, if you want to run um, higher-end applications mm. and really stress it, the machine will hold up. It will. Um, the fact that it's an ARM-based chip in a Windows ecosystem that is typically x86 mm. different architecture, do you have to do anything special? Or uh, did you have to do anything special? Well, to, to, to basically look at that, that, that ecosystem's been... It, it is growing. Mm -hmm. It's growing. Um, if you look at the PC industry in x86, it's been around for decades mm -hmm. at this point. Um, and, and the ARM side of the ecosystem has been growing as, uh, as we have seen in the, I'll call it the last five to seven years. Um, so there is development work in yep. the ecosystem that must be done. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just because of time. Yep. Um, but now that there is actually a solid platform that they can develop on that gives you the performance, that pushes the envelope, I think there's a huge potential now that many of these third-party libraries, applications mm -hmm. that people were tentative about, well, maybe I won't port it. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's an opportunity now for them to get their hands on this and actually go, yeah, now I have a platform I can go play with. So I think Snapdragon X Elite actually can open those doors. It's um, I'm really excited to look for the uh, mini PCs that are coming. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the sort of thermally unconstrained. Let's let it yeah. fly sort of yeah. stuff. Um, how competitive is this going to be? Um, so you've seen the benchmark numbers. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, it's raised a few eyebrows out there in the industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's made a few people kind of scratch their head, <laughs> make them wonder, all right, what, 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 is it real? Is it mm -hmm. not real? And I think they're, they're going to find out very soon that it is very real. Um, I think it's going to stand toe to toe against the competition. I think it will solidly stand toe to toe mm -hmm. against the competition. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gerard, for your time. I'm sure when these devices come out, we'll have to speak again and see, see what you're saying then. Yeah. Um, but sailing forward to, to it. And uh, yeah, congratulations on getting the chip out. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Ian.